So now let's apply the Huckel molecular orbital theory for the allyl systems. We already applied the Huckel molecular orbital theory for ethylene, and uh, here at all, also it is uh, similar to that uh, type of treatment. So here I have given the allyl cation here, allyl radical here, and allyl anion here. You can see that the allyl cation it is CH2 double bond CH CH2 plus okay you have a positive charge here that's why it is a it is called allyl cation and how many two pi how many pi electrons are there it has two pi electrons one pi electron is from is contributed by this carbon and another pi electron is contributed by this carbon okay the p z orbitals of these two carbons uh, has the electron has one electron each and this bond makes the pi bond and there are no electrons like this in this carbon okay so totally there are only two pi electrons and what about the allyl radical allyl radical is ch2 double bond ch single bond ch2 okay and there is one single electron here so if you are checking here there will be one electron from here and one electron from here from this carbon and one electron from this carbon each of these carbon has a piece of atomic orbital and uh, this piece the atomic orbital will have uh, an electron and uh, these two carbons makes a double bond and this carbon has a single electron in the piece the atomic orbital so we call it as radical and altogether it has three pi electrons okay all the carbon atoms has uh, all the carbon atom each carbon atom has one electron uh, in the piece the atomic orbital or in the unhybridized piece the atomic orbital and here is allyl anion it has negative charge here and it is ch2 double bond ch single bond ch2 minus okay so here how many pi electrons are there here it has two pi electrons from here and two pi electrons from here and totally there are four pi electrons in this allyl anion so we have seen many we have seen three allyl systems where there are different numbers of the pi electrons allyl cation with two pi electrons allyl radical with three pi electrons and allyl anion with four pi electrons okay and uh, we can call this type of group whether it is cation radical or anion as the allyl group okay and the carbon skeleton here is C1, C2, C3. C1, C2, C3 is the carbon skeleton. And for therefore the HMO expression is psi is equal to A1, P1 plus A2, P2 plus A3, P3. Where P1, P2 and P3 are the piece of orbitals from each carbon atom. Okay, piece of atomic orbitals from each carbon atom. So the Heckel determinant here is x1 0 1 x1 0 1 x you know how to write this we will write x in the diagonal as the diagonal elements and uh, this is row, row 1 and column 2 2 1 2 and 1 they are connected carbon atoms right so here comes 1 but this is 3 the, the column row 1 column 3 so it is uh, 1 3 1 and 3 are not connected so it is 0 like that we can write 1 because 1 and 2 are connected then this also uh, um, this corresponds to 2 and 3 right so that is uh, 2 and 3 are also connected so we can write 1 here okay similarly you can write this line also so this is a Huckel determinant and where um, x is equal alpha minus beta divided alpha minus e divided by beta the corresponding polynomial from this determinant is x that is this element into the determinant x1 1 x okay this determinant minus 1 that is this element into the determinant which excludes uh, the second column and first row okay? because this one corresponds to the first row and second column so the next the, the determinant is 1 1 0 x okay and then zero into this determinant also but we can neglect that because it is multiplied by zero that is equal to zero okay that is x into 
x square minus 1 minus 1 into x minus 0 that is equal to 0 okay so we can write x cube minus x minus x is equal to 0 or x cube minus 2x is equal to 0 this is the corresponding polynomial that is x cube minus 2x is equal to 0 and what about the solution of this polynomial x cube minus 2x is equal to 0 so x cube minus 2x is equal to 0 or we can write x into x square minus 2 is equal to 0 because we have taken x as a common factor from these two terms therefore x is equal to 0 divided by a square minus 2 that is equal to 0 so that is a solution x is equal to 0 is a solution there should be three roots out of that one root is x is equal to 0 so let's find out the next two roots x cube minus 2x is equal to 0 we already know this from here so x cube is equal to 2x or dividing by x we get x square is equal to 2 therefore x is equal to plus or minus root 2 so one root is equal to plus root 2 and another root of x is equal to minus root 2 okay so x can have three, three th these three roots so the roots of this polynomial are x is equal to 0 x is equal to plus 2 and x is equal to minus root 2 and as we already know x less than 0 means x is equal to minus corresponds to the bonding level e1 x is equal to 0 corresponds to the non-bonding level e2 and the x greater than 0 means x is equal to positive that corresponds to the anti-bonding level e3 okay so let's uh, uh, find out an expression for e1 e1 is equal to alpha minus beta x that is from this expression we have already if we have already um, define the x, x is equal to alpha minus e divided by beta from here we can get the expression for e so e is equal to alpha minus beta x that is equal to alpha minus beta into minus root 2 that is for the bonding level therefore e1 e is equal to alpha into root 2 into beta alpha plus root 2 into beta so that is the energy level corresponding to the bonding okay and what about the non-bonding energy level e2 e2 is equal to alpha minus beta x that is alpha minus beta into 0 that is e2 is equal to alpha actually alpha is the energy of the atomic orbital itself so that's okay that makes sense that is the non-bonding molecular orbital the energy is neither saved nor the energy is um, 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 energy is being uh, increased okay so here e3 that corresponds to the anti-bonding level therefore we have to substitute a plus root 2 for the anti-bonding level here therefore we will get e3 is equal to alpha minus root 2 beta okay so we have three energy levels uh, one corresponds to e1 is equal to alpha plus root 2 beta beta e2 is equal to alpha and e3 is equal to alpha minus root 2 beta okay so the law of energy is uh, alpha plus root 2 beta here we have to remember that uh, beta is uh, actually negative so this has a lowest energy level so in the case of the you can know that you know that the electrons are being filled up in the increasing order of their energy and in the case of the allyl cation we know that there are only two electrons right for the allyl cation there are only two electrons and these two electrons will occupy the lowest possible energy level that is the bonding level and when we comes to when we come to the allyl radical that allyl radical has three electrons right so two of the electrons will go to the lowest possible energy level because an orbital can accommodate a maximum of only, only two electrons the two electrons will occupy here and the next the remaining electron will go to the non-bonding energy level and in the allyl anion there are four electrons four electrons all together out of that the two electrons will go to the bonding level and the remaining two electrons will go to the non-bonding level this is how the electrons are being filled up in the allyl cation allyl radical and allyl anion okay and now we can go for the pi bond energies so in the case of the allyl cation that is e pi c3h5 plus allyl cation and we can 
get the phi bond energy means we uh, take the energy of the electrons when it is in the bonding situation and then we when we find out the difference between the energy if there was if there was no bond okay so uh, the the energy of the two electrons in the allyl cation is equal to 2 into alpha plus root 2 beta because this level is equal to alpha plus root 2 beta and two electrons are there in that level therefore the total energy of the two electrons is equal to 2 into alpha plus root 2 beta minus we are reducing the energy of the electrons if there was no bonding means in the absence of the bonding in the absence of the bonding the electrons will occupy the atomic orbital what is the energy of the atomic orbital that is alpha and two electrons will have an energy of two alpha therefore the difference between these two is equal to two into root two beta two root two beta okay two into root two beta so the pi bond energy here is root 2 root 2 beta that much energy is being saved here okay and what about the pi bond energy of the radical allyl radical it has three electrons right allyl radical has uh, three electrons so it is three into alpha okay actually it is um, we have to we have to take two electrons first because that two electrons occupy alpha plus root 2 beta therefore 2 into alpha plus root 2 beta plus the next electron goes to the non-bonding level this one okay non-bonding level has the energy alpha that is similar to the atomic orbital energy therefore 2 into alpha plus root 2 beta plus alpha that corresponds to the all energy in the bonded situation minus the energy of the electrons in the uh, in the absence of the body that is equal to three electrons energy is equal to three alpha so that is also equal to two root two beta okay so pi bond energy in the case of the allyl radical is two root two beta and what about the allyl anion allyl anion allyl anion has two electrons in the bonding level and the other two electrons in the and a non-bonding level two electrons in the bonding level and two electrons in the non-bonding level so let's calculate the energy of the two electrons in the bonding level and two electrons in the anti-bonding level that is equal to 2 into alpha plus root 2 beta plus 2 alpha okay minus the energy of the electrons if there was no bonding that is 4 alpha because 4 electrons are occupied in the atomic orbitals atomic orbital has the energy of alpha or the total energy is 4 alpha so then the difference between these two is equal to 2 into root 2 beta 2 root 2 beta okay so now you can see that the pi bond energies are identical in all the cases irrespective of whether it is a cation anion or radical the pi bond energies are 2 root 2 beta in all cases it is 2 root 2 beta okay now the pi bond energy for a localized double bond we already know this pi bond energy for a localized double bond is equal to 2 beta this we calculated when we learned the Huckel molecular orbital theory for ethylene if there was a localized double bond okay the localized double bond has a pi bond energy is 2 beta like this okay like this c double bond c like this if the pi bond is we are con con we are considering the pi bond of this system then the pi bond energy of this kind of system is a root 2 beta okay and what is the difference in the pi bond energy of this localized system and the pi bond energy of the allyl radical okay and the allyl radicals pi bond energy is 2 root 2 beta we have already uh, uh, calculated that minus the pi bond energy of the localized system that is 2 beta so that is 2.8284 beta minus 2 beta that is equal to 0 0.8284 beta okay so that is the energy difference in the pi bond energy of the allyl system and the localized carbon carbon double bond okay so we know that beta is negative the allyl system has a decrease in energy right it means that allyl system has a decrease in energy of 0 0.8284 beta okay so this decrease in energy 
means it has a better stability it attains better stability what's the reason for this why it has 0.8284 beta less energy compared to a localized pi system okay and this is due to the delocalization of the pi electrons the energy is being saved due to the delocalization of the pi electrons you can look at these structures okay you can look at the structure for the cation okay and this, in this cation you can see that if the electrons migrate here you get this structure the positive charge will occupy this carbon okay and you can get a double bond here and in the case of the radical also you can see this type of uh, uh, electron movement then the radical center comes here the pi bond comes here and there's a case of the anion okay the electron moves here and this electron moves here then you get a negative charge here and a double bond here what you can understand from here in each case the pi bond is localized delocalized the pi bond can be either between these two carbon or these two carbon you can look at these two structures the pipe in the first structure the pi bond between is between the first and second carbon but in the second possible structure the pi bond is between the second and the third carbon atom it is true for all these systems right it means that the pi bond is delocalized and it is because of this delocalization the energy is being saved compared to a localized pi system okay so energy is saved good thing now we can go for the calculation of hmo coefficients okay we have the equations a1 plus a1x plus a2 is equal to 0 a1 plus a2x plus a3 is equal to 0 a2 plus a3 is equal to 0 do you remember these equations you can directly get it from the coif the determinant itself okay we know the determinant the determinant here is x1 0 1 x 1 0 1 x that's why we have a 1 x plus a 2 is equal to 0 because the, the, this term is gone is 0 the next equation is a 1 plus a 2 x plus a 3 is equal to 0 the last equation is a 2 plus a 3 x is equal to 0 okay only those equations are written there okay and from these equations means a1x plus a2 is equal to 0 a1 plus a2x plus a3 is equal to 0 a2 plus a3 is equal to 0 from these three equations we can go for uh, determining the hmo coefficients okay and let us uh, let us first consider the case of the bonding level and for the bonding level x is equal to minus of root 2 x is equal to minus root 2 okay and from equation number one this equation number one we can substitute for x is equal to minus root 2 here then we get minus root 2 a1 plus a2 is equal to 0 from this one we, it is obvious that a2 is equal to root 2 into a1 and from equation number 3 that is a2 is equal to a3x is equal to 0 we again substitute for minus root 2 we substitute for x is equal to minus root 2 in this equation then we get a2 is equal to root 2 into a3 so we have two expressions for a2 that the first expression is root 2 a1 and the second expression is a2 is equal to root 2 a3 and from these two it is it is uh, uh, understood uh, understood that a1 is equal to um, a3 okay a1 is equal to a3 and now we are going to apply the normalization conditions we only have the relative values of a1 a2 and a3 we don't know the absolute values in order to get the absolute values we go for the normalization condition and the normalization condition is that a1 square plus a2 square plus a3 square is equal to 1 you know how to get this equation if you have learned the variation theorem if you not if you don't know you can go back to the variation theorem and see how this equation is coming okay from this one a1 square plus a2 square a2 square is equal to a1 square because we have already uh, proven that is a2 is equal to um, uh, a1 square plus 2a1 square a1 square because um, a2 is equal to root 2a1 okay a2 is equal to root 2a1 it is here so a2 square is equal to 2a1 square plus a3 square is equal to a1 square because a3 is equal to a1 so we can write a1 square here so it means that 4a1 square is equal to 1 or a1 is equal to 1 by 2 
okay so we have a, an absolute value for a1 and from this one we can find out the value of a2 and a3 so a1 is equal to 1 by root 2 a2 is equal to root 2 into root 2 into we have already proven a2 is equal to root 2 into uh, a1 so let us substitute the value for a1 in this equation a2 is equal to root 2 into 1 by 2 that is equal to 1 divided by root 2 and a3 is equal to a1 therefore a3 is equal to 1 by 2 again therefore we can get the expression for the bonding HMO psi 1 the psi expression is a1 p1 plus a2 p2 plus a3 p3 so let's substitute the value of a1 a2 and a3 in this then we get psi 1 psi 1 is equal to half p1 plus 1 by root 2 p2 plus 1 by 2 p3 okay that is the expression for psi 1 and similarly we can go for the expression for psi 2 for psi 2 x is equal to 0 that is the non-bonding level and from this one we can prove that a1 into 0 plus a2 is equal to 0 from equation number 1 means a2 is equal to 0 and from equation number 2 we can prove that a1 into 0 plus 0 plus a3 is equal to 0 that is a1 is equal to minus a3 okay and from normalization condition again we have a1 square plus a2 square plus a3 square is equal to 1 therefore let us substitute for these values a1 square plus a2 is equal to 0 a2 is equal to 0 and a3 square is equal to what is a3 a3 is equal to minus 7 therefore minus 7 square that is equal to 1 it means 2 a1 square is equal to 1 or a1 square is equal to 1 by 2 or a1 is equal to 1 divided by root 2 therefore a3 is equal to minus 1 divided by root 2 because we have already proven that a1 is equal to minus a3 so now we have the values for a1 a2 and a3 a1 is equal to 1 by root 2 a2 is equal to 0 a3 is equal to minus 1 by root 2 now we are ready to get an expression for the non-bonding HMO. So let us substitute the value of a1, a2 and a3 in our psi expression. Then psi2 is equal to 1 divided by root 2 p1 plus 0 into p2 plus minus 1 by root 2 into p3. That is equal to psi2 is equal to 1 divided by root 2 into p1 minus p3. 1 divided by root 2 into p1 minus p3. And now we can go for the anti-bonding level. For the anti-bonding level, x is equal to plus root 2. And from equation number 1, we have root 2 into a1 plus a2 is equal to 0. Therefore, a2 is equal to minus root 2 into a1. And from equation number 3, we have a2 plus root 2 into a3 is equal to 0. And from this one, we can get a1 is equal to, uh, a2 is equal to minus root 2 into a3. And from these two expressions, a2 is equal to minus root 2 a1, a2 is equal to minus root 2 a3, we can get a1 is equal to a3. And now we are again going to come for the normalization condition, that is a1 square plus a2 square plus a3 square is equal to 1. And from this one a1 square, 2 a1 square plus a2 square is equal to 1, because a1 is equal to a3, right? So 2 a1 square plus minus root 2 into a1, the all square is equal to 1. So 4 a1 square is equal to 1, or a1 is equal to 1 by 2 okay so now we have the expression for a1 from that we can get the expression for a2 and a3 so a1 is equal to 1 by 2 therefore a2 is equal to minus root 2 into a1 so substitute the value for a1 here so a2 is equal to minus 1 divided by root 2 and a3 is equal to a1 therefore a3 is equal to 1 by 2 therefore we have an anti-bonding HMO expression psi 3 is equal to 1 divided by root 2 p1 minus 1 by root 2 p2 plus 1 by root 2 p3 okay now we have the expression for psi 1 psi 2 and psi 3 now you look at the expression for psi 1 a1 psi 1 is equal to uh, 1 by root 2 p1 plus 1 by root 2 p2 plus 1 by root 2 p3 1 1 by 2 p1 plus 1 by root 2 p2 plus 1 by 2 p3 okay that's correct 1 by 2 p1 plus 1 by root 2 p2 plus 1 by 2 p3 okay so from this one we can see that the p1 and the p2 coefficient is uh, 1 divided by 2 and the p2 coefficient is, coefficient is 1 divided by root 2 okay so p2 has a greater coefficient 
So this is so. Uh, this can be seen in the graphical representation here. The graphical representation is here like this. So C1 and C2. Okay, and this is uh, around C2. Or here you can see that the, the, the coefficient of the P2 is 1 divided by root 2, which is greater than 1 divided by 2. Okay, so C1, C2, C3, this is actually symmetrical, but here uh, the psi value is much greater and you, it is obvious from the psi expression itself. And this is for uh, psi 1. Okay, and what about psi 2? In the case of psi 2, what is the expression for psi 2? Psi 2 expression is very important. Psi 2 expression is 1 by root 2 P1 plus uh, minus 1 by root 2 P3. Okay. And the coefficient of P2 is 0. Okay. So this is obvious from this one. Obvious from this one. Or we can write like psi 2 is equal to my 1 by root 2 to P1 minus P3. So it is obvious that the coefficient is a, a positive coefficient here, a negative coefficient for the p3 and zero coefficient for the p is a p2 orbital for the second carbon atom. So that is obvious in this uh, graphical representation itself. You can see that the psi value is uh, positive here and the psi value comes negative in, in, in the place of the c3 but in the place of c2 the psi value becomes negative or we have a node here, node here. It is obvious in the expression itself because P2 has the coefficient 0. Okay, So, in the middle point, uh, there, there is no uh, um, psi value or psi value is equal to 0. And what about the expression for psi 3? The psi 3 expression is 1 by 2 P1 minus 1 by root 2 P2 plus 1 by 2 P3. Right? So, this has a positive coefficient. Then it has a negative coefficient and it has a positive coefficient. It is obvious here also. Okay. It is obvious here. So, um, the, the, you can see that the, the, the coefficient here, uh, no, no, the, the graphical representation here, it is positive in place of C1 and C3, but it is negative in place of uh, C2. So, it is obvious. And what about... The three-dimensional shapes. You can see that the three-dimensional shape. The the, the 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 this is a shape of psi one. This is uh, there is no node here, nodal plane here. This is for psi two, and there is a nodal plane in psi two. C two has no electron density. Okay, in place of C two, there is no pi electron density. So it has a nodal plane. And what about this one? C one C psi three. In the case of psi 3, there are two nodal planes. You can see this here itself, two nodal planes. There is one node here and there is one node uh, here also. Okay, two nodes are there. And uh, these two nodes, this node is coming in between C1 and the first node is coming in between C1 and C2. Second node is coming in between C2 and C3. But in this case, the node is coming at C2. Okay, so you can see this here itself. And the in between C1 and C2, here is a node. Here also in between C2 and C3 there is a node, but here the node is coming at C2 itself. Okay, so these are the three-dimensional shapes. And I hope you understood all these things. If you have any doubt, don't hesitate to ask me. Okay, and thank you for watching and stay tuned.